I am Bonnie Rich, and I am a State House representative for the District 97, which is um, parts of Gwinnett County, which is um, in the northeastern uh, part of the Atlanta metro area. I would like to welcome you all here today and officially call to order the joint meeting of the House Legislative and Congressional Reapportionment and the Senate Reapportionment and Redistricting Committees. Thank you all for being here. Um, and thank you all to our committee members who have traveled from across the state to be here. We also have committee members who are um, attending virtually via live stream. So welcome to you all as well. You have several of your elected representatives with you as well. We have Representative Gerald Green, Clay Perkle, Bill Yerda, and Joe Campbell. So thank you all, gentlemen, for being here. And we begin our committee meetings in both the House and the Senate with prayer. And at this time, I would like to ask if Representative Gerald Green would open us in prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we gather here today, let us be wise enough to understand the process. Let us be wise enough to know that the citizens of the state of Georgia are the ones that we represent. And Father, we thank you for these representatives who've come so far and senators. And we thank you, O oh Lord, for the blessings that thou has given to each and every one of us. And Lord, be with us and guide us and direct us in the days ahead as we prepare for redistricting and all the other th jobs that we have to do at your state capitol. And Father, we just thank you now. Go with us and guide us and direct us in all things. In the holy name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, thank you. And uh, I, along with uh, Chairman John Kennedy, are going to be leading us through this hearing tonight. We want to be sure that we are hearing from you all, the members of the public, about the redistricting process. This is an extremely important part of the process to hear from you and what you know about your communities. This is the... What number hearing are we on here out of 11? We're going to have 11 total hearings. This is seven or eight. We're going to have 11 total hearings uh, across the state. And we are a little bit more than halfway through that. Um, in order to allow everyone to speak, we've had to set some limits on the time. Uh, tonight, I think, is going to be the most that we've been able to allow, which will be five minutes. Each person will have up to five minutes. That does not mean you have to take the whole five minutes. Um, but based on the number of people who have signed up, it looks like that we can allow each member up to that. We have some future meetings coming up, like I mentioned. The next one is not going to be too, too far from here. It's going to be held tomorrow evening in Columbus. And then the next night, we're going to have uh, a hearing in Macon. And then on Friday, we are going to have one more virtual hearing. Senator Kennedy and I will be at the Capitol, but members of the public will be able to join us from wherever they are. At each of these hearings, we will hear what people in the different parts of the state want to tell us about their area and ideas for drawing plans. Georgia is a big state. It's very diverse from the mountains, we've been in the mountains, to the city and to the rural areas, the coastal areas. We have a lot of different communities here and you all know your communities better than we do. So we want to hear what you have to say about them. In addition to these comments here that we're going to be hearing live, we are also receiving written commentary. If you want to visit the website for the State House or the State Senate at www.house.ga.gov or senate.ga.gov, right there from our landing page, there will be a link that you can click to submit written testimony. Our goal is to make sure that we get all of the written testimony in one place. So we have asked 
that members of the public submit the written testimony in that forum so that we can house it and collect it together and review it when it comes time to draw the maps. With that, I'm going to turn this over to Senator Kennedy to finish explaining to you about the process that we're going to go through tonight. Well, good evening. Thank you, Chair Rich. I appreciate that. Am I on? Yeah. Um, so again, I want to give you a welcome and tell you that we both appreciate very much you attending this evening and this afternoon. We look forward to hearing your comments. I trust, trust me when we tell you that we are here to hear from you, uh, not for you to really hear from us. Um, I want to recognize uh, Senator Dean Burke, the senator from the 11th, seated to my right, uh, from Bainbridge. He has the 11th Senate District. And are there any other senators that serve in the Georgia Senate? Uh, the, I, the light's in my eyes, and I hope I'm not missing someone. All right, maybe not. Um, so, Senator Burke, thank you for being here this evening. I also want to thank Albany State University for allowing us to host this here. Uh, so for those of you connected with, with the school, thank you very much for giving us this great facility for us to gather this evening. So one of the things that most folks want to know is how and when does this culminate in a special session where we know y'all have to, as legislators, go to the Capitol and approve and vote on the maps? And the answer is we don't know that yet. Uh, the Census Bureau is saying that we will get partial data in mid-August and complete data in late September. As you might recognize, that's significantly later than when we normally get that type data every 10 years, but because of COVID-19 last year, the census workers were delayed in getting their work done, so collecting and compiling all, all of that data has been delayed. So we're gonna get that a little bit later. So that means that we're gonna be later in the process, that we will have less time to do the work that we have to do, but nonetheless, we'll get it done. So I don't know exactly when we'll have special session, but it'll be sometime later on, and that's the best I can tell you right now. Um, and I understand, um, well, come on a minute. thank you. Um, so there's also some litigation going on with regard to the census data. Uh, that may further delay when we get data in a consumable fashion that we can use, but nonetheless, we'll move as quickly as we can when we do get it. So we're collecting comments right now about the process and the needs of our state, uh, and we'll likely hear from other folks about the timing of that, and so we appreciate and look forward to your input. At some point after the hearings uh, that we are having, and as Chairman Rich said, we're having 11 of these around the state, we will have actual formal redistricting committee meetings where we will do uh, the, the work to prepare us for the special session that will follow. So, this afternoon, as far as our hearing today, uh, here's how we're going to approach things. First of all, we're going to watch a short video uh, that's been prepared by the media services folks. And again, I want to thank them for the good work that they have done. Uh, but they put it together to educate everyone about the process that we're going to be going through and a little bit about redistricting as well. Then we're going to open it up for everyone who has signed up uh, to speak to us this evening and uh, often when politicians say that they're going to hold a hearing, it really means they want to go talk and they like to hear themselves talk, but that's actually not why we're here. We're here not to ask or ask, answer questions. We are here to hear from you. And so, again, thank you for being with us this evening. So, consistent with how we've handled the hearings both in 2011 and 20, 2001, um, that's the process, and in case you were around at those times, you'll see a lot of consistency in how we're handling the process as well. Um, so in order to respect everybody's time and to give everyone time to, to uh, give us their thoughts, as Chairman Rich said, we're going to give everybody five minutes. Uh, as she said, you don't have to take all five minutes. Uh, you get bonus points if you don't take all the five minutes. Um, but it, uh, it, in addition to what we're doing tonight, please understand that you can always submit written comments to us that will go in the ultimate data bank of things that we are saving that will be part of the process, that will be part of the materials that we will look at when we start the process of, of redrawing the map. So if there's something, if, if you're here this evening and you want to share something but you don't want to speak at the microphone, that is certainly fine. Please just submit it to us and, and we will make sure it goes into the, the data bank, if you will. Um, all of these hearings are being recorded. 
So we'll have the benefit of uh, that going forward uh, so that if you or your friends have an interest in looking at this and want to look it up later on, they can certainly do that. Uh, I think our minority leader, uh, uh, Butler, is here, someone said. Uh, leader Butler, are you here with us? Is she? Oh, there, I'm sorry. Okay. Very good. You snuck in. I didn't see you over there. I'm sorry. But uh, welcome. Uh, leader Butler is one of my Senate colleagues, so uh, thank you for being here. All right, with that, uh, let's uh, cue the video, and then we'll begin to hear from you uh, in the, in the uh, comments you'd like to give us this evening. Every 10, years, Every 10 following years following the decennial census, the process of redistricting begins all over our country. Let's take a look at what that redistricting is and what else we need to know before we begin this process in the state of Georgia. My name is Gina Wright, and I'm the Executive Director of the Office of Legislative and Congressional Reapportionment. We are a nonpartisan joint office of the Georgia General Assembly, and we serve both the House and the Senate. What is redistricting? As the population in our state grows, the number of people in each district must be adjusted so that the population in each district is as close to equal as practicable. This is done by redistricting, or modifying the boundary lines of the districts. In Georgia, our new 2020 census resident population total is 10,711,908 people. Because of this population increase, each of our 14 congressional districts will need to adjust to have 765,136 people in them. At the state level, our legislative branch of government has 56 state senators and 180 representatives in the state house elected by districts. State Senate districts will be redrawn to now include around 191,284 people. State house districts will also need to increase in population size to around 59,511 people. In the Georgia General Assembly, there is a standing committee on redistricting in both the House and the Senate. Each committee has a chairman. Hi, I'm Bonnie Rich. I'm chairman of the Legislative and Congressional Reapportionment Committee in the State House. I've served in that capacity since 2019. Since 2018, I have represented District 97, which includes parts of Duluth, Swanee, and Sugar Hill in Gwinnett County. Hello, I'm State Senator John F. Kennedy, and I represent the 18th District in the State Senate, which includes all of Monroe, Peach, Crawford, and Upson Counties, and part of Bibb County and Houston County. I also am Chairman of the Senate Redistricting and Reapportionment Committee. What is reapportionment, and how is it different from redistricting? The term apportionment is the act of dividing and allocating representation proportionally. The United States Constitution requires that all 435 House districts shall be apportioned among the 50 states based on population from each decennial census. There is a guarantee of at least one seat per state in the United States House, and a method of equal proportions determines how the other 385 are distributed. Every 10 years, states may gain or lose congressional districts based on how they gained or lost population in comparison to other states based on data from the decennial census. The state of Georgia presently has 14 seats in the U.S. House and the 2010 census resulted in a gain of one new seat for the state following an increase of two new districts in 2000. It's common to interchange the term reapportionment with the term redistricting, but the two terms really don't mean the same thing. Reapportionment only occurs at the federal level when U.S. House districts are distributed amongst the states. Even with a gain of over a million people in Georgia over the past decade, Georgia will continue to have 14 congressional districts. When does redistricting take place? Traditionally, the governor of Georgia issues a call for a special legislative session in late summer or early fall following the arrival of the new census data. The sole purpose of this session is to adopt newly redrawn maps for all statewide district plans and may also include new maps for local county commission or school board districts. The session occurs so that all county election officials have sufficient time to update voter district assignments once the process is complete prior to elections the next year. After the Georgia General Assembly adopts new maps and the governor signs the bills into law, they become the new election districts for use in the next election cycle, 
or on the date specified in the legislation. This year, with COVID-related delays in the census, the special session will likely take place later in the year because we will not receive full census data until late August or September. What other factors do we have to consider besides equal population? The first mission of redistricting is to ensure that districts are roughly equal to each other. Equalizing population ensures that each individual's vote counts the same toward their representatives. But equal population is only one part of the puzzle. Maps must also comply with the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and traditional principles of redistricting, like ensuring communities of interest are represented, avoiding major changes to existing representation in the legislature, and keeping local government jurisdictions whole. Those legal criteria are what often keeps maps from being drawn as perfect squares across our state. Why do we have public hearings? The redistricting process begins with hearing from the public. The General Assembly is ready to hear from you about the uniqueness of your part of the state, what communities of interest are here, and what important factors it should consider as we all prepare to redraw the districts later this year. Okay, thank you very much. Our first speaker tonight will be Marcian Barton, who will be speaking from her seat. If you will. Okay, Andrew is going to be getting her the microphone. Thank you. I'm Marcia Ann Benton from Thomasville, Georgia, and I want to thank the committee for coming down here to South Georgia. We appreciate the fact that you're willing to come down, and I know that every one of us here is concerned about redistricting. Um, I would like to say that 10 years ago, y'all did a wonderful job. Thank you for that. And please, we know that we're not urban, we're rural but please keep our communities as whole as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barton. Next up, we have Sherry Henley. And Ms. Henley, if you will make your way to the microphone at the front. I'm Sherry Henley from Miller County. Miller and Seminole counties needs representation for our rural counties, not representation from the more urban areas around Albany. Thank you, Ms. Henley. Uh, next will be Belinda Bryant, and then Ray Brashear will follow Ms. Bryant. Good evening. First of all, I'd like to say thank you all for coming. But um, my district is 153, and we've been working really, truly hard. Ma'am, could you speak a little closer? We're having trouble hearing you. We want to, okay. we want to hear you. Want you want me to start over? Yes, ma'am. Thank okay. you. Okay. I got you. My name is Delinda Bryant, and I'm the CEO and founder of Albany Boulders Coalition. We've been building a network in District 153. It would be very, very... Um, tragic if our community was divided. So with that, we would like for y'all to consider that and let's keep us together the way we've been working hard to connect and unite with each other. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, um, Ms. Bryant. Next we have, um, Ray Brashear. <laughs> yes. Hello. Thank you, for, thank you for coming down to South Georgia. My name is Ray Brashear, and I'm a resident of Thomas County. I'm somewhat unique because I grew up in metro Atlanta. I grew up in Cobb County, and I spent 50 years in the metropolitan area. 
My recent move to South Georgia has taught me an awful lot about the state I did not know before. The beauty of a rural South Georgia cotton field, the magnificent community of people that bond together for so many different reasons. I don't think the metropolitan area understands what the southern part of the state needs. I'm looking to you as our representatives and people who care about us to take into your heart and take into your pen the special needs that are presented by the people in this room this evening. I ask that you desperately please keep in, keep in your mind the needs that happen in South Georgia that are different from those that happen in metropolitan Atlanta. We need your vote and we need your help in keeping our community strong and vibrant. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Brashier. Next, we have Henry Mathis, and after that will be Kimberly Fountain. Madam Chair, Chairman Kennedy, thanks, and thanks to the committee for giving us an opportunity to provide some input into this process, which takes place every 10 years. And uh, with that, I'd like to ask a question. Where are we headed? Where are we headed in the state of Georgia? What direction are we going? Are you going in the direction of population to draw the lines? Will you defer to a redistricting commission? Will race determine the redrawing? Will this process be guided by partisanship? One of these approaches will be used to, withdraw, to redraw the state and federal lines. The question is, which method will this body choose. In our democracy, every voice should be heard, and every voice should, be, should count equally. In a democratic society, democracy works best when our voting maps are fairly drawn. Drawing the boundaries is best achieved when being guided by census data. To do otherwise would be ill-advised. Utilizing any other tool, such as the American Community Survey, will be a mistake. I'm asking this body to recommend ending gerrymandering now. We know typical gerrymandering cases in the U.S. takes the form of partisan gerrymandering, which is aimed at favor in one political party or weaken another. Then there's bipartisan gerrymandering, which is aimed at protecting incumbents by multiple political parties. Finally, there is racial gerrymandering, which is aimed at weakening the power of minority representation. We must protect the 14th Amendment. We must guarantee the one man, one vote. Voters, voters should choose politicians, not the other way around. We must return the power to draw districts to we, the people. And then finally, the, 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 the case law of the last five decades uh, from population, uh, just to cite a couple, from population there's vacant be called 369 U.S. 186 in 1962. But then there's Evenwell and Abbott 136 State Court, 1120 and 2016. Commission, there's Arizona State Legislature versus Arizona Independent Redistricting Commission. And then race, there's Stormberg versus Gingles, 478 U.S. 30, 1986. Bartlett and Strickland, 556 U.S. 1, 2009. And then race. There's Bush versus Vera, 517 U.S., 952, 1996. 
and then there shall be counted beholder. Partisanship. Gaffney versus Commons, 412 U.S. 735, 1973. Davis versus Van Diemer, 478 U.S. 109, 1986. Invite versus Jubilara, 541 U.S. 267, 2004. Again, I want to commend each of you for coming down, being a part of this reapportionment committee. And we trust that you will be guided by your hearts. You will be guided by the one man, one vote principle. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mathis. Next, we have Kimberly Fountain. I want to thank the redistricting committee for giving me the opportunity to speak. My name is Kimberly Fountain, and I'm with the ACLU of Georgia. The ACLU of Georgia is a nonpartisan organization dedicated to protecting the civil liberties of each and every Georgian. The right to vote is one of the most sacred civil liberties we have as Americans, and that fair maps are crucial to ensuring that every vote counts equally. We are here in Albany today, a community that represents the growing diversity in our state. The diversity of the greater Albany area has grown considerably over the last 10 years. Um, from our data estimates, we looked at Doherty County and the surrounding counties of Terrell, Worth, and Lee. Although the voting age population has decreased by about 4% in the greater Albany area, the diversity has grown exponentially. The black voting age population has grown about 4%. The Asian voting age population has grown about 40%. And the Hispanic voting age population has grown nearly 30%. And the white voting age population has decreased by around 9%. Overall, the people of color voting age population in the greater Albany area has grown by 5%. The maps that are drawn in 2021 need to take increasing diversity of the greater Albany area into account and ensure that voters of color have the same opportunity to elect candidates of their choice as white voters do. Ensuring that voters of color have the same opportunity to elect candidates of their choice as white voters um, do is key to preserving our democracy and protecting our sacred right to vote. To further ensure that our sacred right to vote is protected, we must also have a fair redistricting process. This means providing more opportunities for public hearings across the state after the full census data has been released in the fall and having a robust mechanism for citizens to provide feedback on proposed maps. The decisions made during the redistricting process will impact the lives of countless Georgians for the next 10 years or more, and we urge the body to ensure that the redistricting process is fair and that the diversity of our state is adequately and appropriately reflected in the maps. Thank you for your time, and I do have some data. I'll pass it on to you all. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fountain. Next, we have Tim Wesselman. Good evening. My name is uh, Tim Wesselman. I'm a resident of Albany. I would like to thank the uh, chair and committee members for this opportunity to speak. Um, I had technical difficulties today, so my notes are a little scattered, but hopefully uh, I'll be able to get through this without too much delay. Now, as we meet here today, as as you meet here today, Georgia has the potential to do the right thing. We, we can find that Georgia has the opportunity to stand up against voter protection, provided this committee takes some actions that respect the rights of all voters. 
as this committee considers its redistricting work, Georgia actually has two different records on voter protection. On the one hand, we have the 2018 gubernatorial election in which then Secretary of State Brian Kemp refused to resign as Secretary of State while campaigning to be elected to the post he now holds. In the six years leading to that election, Kemp's office canceled more than 1.4 million voter registrations, and during the 2018 election, Kemp held up more than 53,000 voter registration applications. 70% of those registrations belonged to African Americans, according to the Associated Press. And then, after the Democrats seized control of the Senate and the White House in 2020, that marked a time where we knew Georgia was suddenly a battleground state. So how did Georgia res respond? Georgia responds with Senate Bill 2020. Now 2020, uh, uh, Senate Bill 202, I'm so sorry. Senate Bill 202 gives the state legislature a single partisan body enormous control over hundreds of local independent elections offices. We're already seeing that here in Doherty County as we look at some of the proposals coming before our local elections board. 202 says no excuse absentee voting is no longer allowed. We have many re so many restrictions in Senate Bill 202 that this legislation is rightly called Jim Crow 2.0 at the national level. But, you know, we got to look at the rest of Georgia's record. After all, Governor Brian Kemp and Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger did famously stand up to then President uh, Trump when President Trump asked that these state leaders use their position to delay and, and, and subvert the voting process. So we, we need to look at the ability of two Georgia leaders to stand up to enormous pressure. These individuals will face repercussions for what they did. They were brave and they did the right thing. So we're going to ask you to do the right thing. First, as you go forward, we're asking you to make sure your actions comply with Voters Rights Act Section 2, which that prohibits discrimination on the basis of race. That means not only do you not intend to be racially biased, but in, in effect, you protect Albany's seats, District 151, District 154, District 153, and Senate District 12. Our incumbents should remain our incumbents. And, and we, we ask that this process be transparent. Now, transparent redistricting and reapportionment process can be transparent before the fact or after the fact. If after the fact we find that certain districts were drawn so that a Republican incumbent wouldn't have to face a Democratic challenger, transparently we will know what this committee has done. So we're asking for transparent, fair redistricting that observes the principles of compactness, protecting communities of interest, avoiding unnecessary pairings of minority incumbents against Republican office holders. So we know that, that when asked, our leaders will tell us they intended to do the right thing. The results we're asking for are allow the Doherty County and Albany area to build and, and keep a map that gives us seven U.S. congressional districts out of the 14. Thank you. All right. Next, we have Demonish Anatench. Good evening, chairs, members of the committee. My name is Jamanish Antenna. I am a redistricting coordinator at Fair Count, and I live and work in Georgia. 
Fair Count is a nonpartisan nonprofit focused on equi equity, access, and participation in our democracy. I am here to encourage that the committee create a not more transparent, thorough, accessible, and equitable process for taking community input during this redistricting cycle. Since Section 5 of the VRA has been struck down by the Supreme Court and preclearance will not be a part of this redistricting cycle, concerns about equitable redistricting are particularly pertinent this year. According to the U.S. Census Bureau's Population Estimates Program, by July 1, 2019, Georgia had a population of more than 10 and a half million people. 48% of those people are people of color. 32%, more than 32% are black, and nearly 10% are Latinx. Yet at every district level, our elected officials are predominantly white. We ask that in redrawing district boundaries, the committee and each of Georgia's 56 senators and 180 members of the House redistrict fairly so that the voices, will, and power of Georgia's communities of color not be further suppressed. There are over 5 million people of color in the state of Georgia, and we ask that you accurately represent us. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll have Isabel Otero, and then followed by John Howard. And I think I was handed a note that uh, Senator Freddie Sims is with us. Senator Sims, are you with us? Where are you? There she is. And I think we are in your district, aren't we, Senator? Great. Thank you. And then Senator Tanya Anderson uh, is also with us. So, yes, ma'am, you have the microphone. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak. Hello, my name is Isabel Otero. I am a policy associate with the SPLC Action Fund. The SPLC is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization dedicated to upholding the fundamental right of all citizens to vote. In our past testimony, we have strongly encouraged the Joint Redistricting Committee to provide community members an opportunity to give meaningful input before this committee enacts its redistricting plans. Although the committee has now provided a Google document form, the form does not allow the community members to attach documents, which forecloses the ability to submit via the form any proposed redistricting maps or even partial maps depicting communities of interest to which the community members belong. Even worse, the online submission forms were provided only in English, which appears that so it appears that the committee is particularly uninterested in receiving input from the over 100,000 Georgians with limited English proficiency. We have also not received any information regarding the committee's 2021 redistricting guidelines, which makes it really difficult or impossible for the public to comment on the redistricting criteria that the committees will follow. Uh, finally, as you know, these town halls are taking place prior to the release of census data. So community members do not have the opportunity to weigh in using the data the committees will actually rely on to draw maps. Providing opportunities for the public to give meaningful <clears throat> input is especially important in Dordery County, uh, where black citizens uh, make up the majority of the population according to 20, 2019 estimates, and where redistricting will have a significant decade-long impact on black residents' ability to elect their candidates of choice. Moreover, recent voter intimidation incidents and splitting of the city of Albany, where many black voters reside, into three state house districts has appro appropriately increased uh, public interest in the redistricting process here. Instead of welcoming public engagement, we feel the committees have declined to respond to voters' questions, refused to generate or publish redistricting guidelines, and have ignored repeated requests for public testimony options after the census data has been released. This is far from the fair and open and transparent redistricting process that we expect from our state elected officials. And we again call for the committee to provide and publicize ample public input opportunities and mechanisms for community members to submit their comments after the census data has been released, including for community members to submit their own proposed maps. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Uh, John Howard, please. Good evening, and let me 
say welcome to Southwest Georgia and Albany and Doherty County. Be as it may, back in 1965, the Voting Rights Act covered many southern states. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Virginia, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, South Carolina, and Virginia, and many, many other counties in different states. What is appalling is that the 1965 Voting Rights Act was a landmark decision by the federal legislation in the United States prohibit racial discrimination in voting rights signed by the late President Johnson on August 6, 1965. It has been in effect for the last 56 years, but sad to say, on June the 25th, 2013, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled by a 5-4 decision that voted to the eliminate Section 4 of the Voting Rights Act and Section 5 were pre-cleansed before it would be abolished. The landmark decision that happened was Chevy County versus Holder, July 25, 2013. As we stand here today and you all gather data and input and information, we certainly hope that you will look at that in the last 56 years that this state has made a substantial progress. And we need to be open, we need to be fair, and we need to be transparent. It's to say that the gains that minorities have made and the population that have been distributed throughout the state of Georgia. And we need to be also aware that there are many statistician has predicted that in the next 10 years that the state of Georgia will be a state of peoples of color, very large minority population. We'd like to also say that as you make the decision, we certainly hope that when you draw these lines that it will not be like a piece of bacon strip, long and narrow and crooked like a snake. We want to make sure that all been in Doherty County is and continue to say in the second congressional district and we continue to have our elected officials in the Senate, Fred Powell Stem, also in the House, um, Mr. Gerald Green, Mr. Winford Dukes, and Ms. Camille Hobson. We have trust in them and we certainly want to see that Albany and Doherty County will continue to be a city that our representatives can be proud of. We don't mind incorporating portion of rural Southwest Georgia, but we'll make sure that Auburn Doherty County is not split up like a domino effect because we trust our elected officials and we look forward to doing. And as you go back and make the decision when the General Assembly reconvene in a special session sometime in October, November, we hope that we're in divine wisdom that ladies and gentlemen, that you would do the right thing and make sure that we move Georgia to the next future and the next generation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Barbara Kohenauer, please. Madam Chairman, distinguished guests, we're happy to have you in South Georgia. We appreciate your being here today to hear our concerns about redistricting in our state. I have two very short things to say. <clears throat> Number one is that our state is not one that the federal government is focusing on because they suspect 
that the current redistricting program is perhaps gerrymandered. Uh, I think that is a compliment to your group that came before, and I have great faith in this group that's sitting before me now. Uh, secondly, I've been, oh, I didn't tell you I'm from Thomasville, Georgia. Uh, and I'm very proud of that, I apologize. Okay, second thing is that we would like to see, as other people have spoken, obviously from different parties, you know, I could figure that out pretty quickly, <laughs> but uh, we have three different representatives in the city of Thomasville. It would be nice if we could put groups together that live together and work together, that we would have more homogeneous groups that represented a community of people who are friends, a community of people who work together, and a community of people who love their country and love their state. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Heber, I hope I'm reading that correctly. Mary Heber. I'm Mary Beth Heber from Thomasville. And I just wanted to thank each one of you for what you're doing and the hard, and the hard work that you're putting into this. Um, and I just wanted to Thank you, too. You know, in the past, the gerrymandering did not take place. We, we're, you should be very proud that it was done fairly, and we know that it'll be done fairly again. And when you're just working on the map, I just want you to remember that we're all Georgians. It's not about our race and our diversity. It's about each one of us are Georgians, and we're all one, and that uh, we want the best for the state, but we all have an equal opportunity to vote. There's no reason for anybody in Georgia not to vote, and so they've had that opportunity. And that's something we should be proud of. And so I just pray, that, uh, ask that you would, um, and if you have to add people to certain districts, that you try to keep them, again, the way they are now, as close as possible. But um, I do want to thank you. And I just, we all trust that there will be no gerrymandering because there wasn't any in the past. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Next is Melanie Kemp. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, ma'am. We do want to hear from you, and the folks that are watching live stream uh, can't hear you if you don't have a microphone. So we'll, we'll bring one to you if you don't want to come forward. But we we do want for the other fo for the folks that are watching live stream to be able to get the benefit of your comments. Thank you. Well, it's not that great. <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe it is. Well, I want to thank y'all for coming. Uh, we welcome you to Southwest Georgia, the best part of Georgia, so we think. And I want to thank you, too, for the opportunity that we have to be a part of this process with you. And that's it. Thank you. Benny Hand is next. Followed by Maria Murdy? Murphy, I think it is. Murphy? Mr. Hand, you have the microphone. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, to the committee, uh, Chairwoman and Chair, Chairman, thank you all for coming to Doherty County in Southwest Georgia. Again, my name is Benny Hand. I'm a citizen of Albany and Doherty County. Uh, I'm concerned about this process because I want the citizens of Doherty County uh, uh, to be excited about their responsibility as electors uh, and not discourage believing, believing that their vote won't count and that their opinion doesn't matter. I want to believe that this process will be fair and equitable. It is my hope that the process will ensure that our community representatives are kept intact. Uh, and so I'm concerned that the process is not gerrymandered uh, to dilute the strength and voice of well-established communities. I hope this process does not lend credence to the often repeated statement that my vote doesn't count 
because they will do what they want to do. And so I end by echoing the sentiments of others that after, after the census data has been received and we have a clearer picture of the numbers, uh, that we again be given an opportunity to address this committee and address the work that is going on as it relates to redistricting and reapportionment. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Maria Murphy, please. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We're glad to be here. Thank you. The next name is uh, Jeremiah, and it, it begins with an M. I'm sorry, I can't read the writing. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Chairman. Um, to the Chairman of the Committee, um, Jeremy, I, I, my name is Kevin Boy. I'm from Decatur County, and I'm from um, Bainbridge and Alipogas area. And I asked my great nephew, who's a student at ASU, to um, put his name on the list because I was running late after work and everything. But I'd just like to say that um, we want to thank you all for coming to Southport, Georgia. We want to thank you for being here today. And we also, I stand in full support of everything everybody has already said. And we just want to just echo that we just want you all to be transparent and fair when it comes down to the redistricting of our state. Thank you. Thank you. Sierra Franklin, followed by Anna Farogi. Greetings, honorable members of the Joint Reapportionment Committee. My name is Sierra Franklin, and I am the Engagement and Program Organizer for Common Cause Georgia, and a 23-year resident of Albany, Georgia. First of all, I would like to start by thanking you for taking the time out to be here today in Southwest Georgia to engage in a meaningful conversation with hopes that it inspires transformative and long-lasting change. More often than not, Southwest Georgia is often overlooked, neglected, and forgotten about. The first step towards real change starts with meaningful conversation. So let's talk. First, transparency and inclusivity is key. Common Cause has long been an advocate for fair, and transparent redistricting processes across the country, including working with legislative champions to support redistricting reform legislation in Georgia. For too long, redistricting has been done behind closed doors, placing the needs of partisan politicians over the needs of communities. 2021 is an opportunity to change that. According to, accordingly, Common Cause strongly urges the Georgia General Assembly to commit to a fair, transparent, and open process of drawing district lines that prioritizes communities, particularly Black, Latinx, AAPI, Indigenous, and other communities of colors that have traditionally been marginalized or excluded from the conversation and the process. During the previous redistricting cycles, Many decisions were made in secret and with sparse public input nor knowledge of the proceedings. If we are to rebuild trust in our government and ensure that every Georgia voter has equal opportunity to elect candidates that share their lived experiences and values, we must guarantee that the redistricting process is open, transparent, and provides ample access for public input. Increasing transparency is a critical part of a fair redistricting process. This should include creating multiple avenues for public comment to be submitted, including but not limited to, to a website portal, 
an email address, or public hearings. Providing live language translation services so that Georgians that are non-English proficient, proficient can participate. Also, refraining from the use of alternative data sets to generate maps. Instead, providing public access to the data used to draft maps, as well as the public comment period on drafts or final maps before passage. Also, consider using official procurement procedures to obtain mapping experts, redistricting legal experts, or any of the other contractors who may be used in the redistricting process. In addition, providing a written report explaining the justification of decisions to divide communities, municipalities, or counties. This concurrently with the final maps and should be available for public review online. Last but not least, creating and brainstorming with communities on more inclusive options for communities to participate while also allowing for inclusive options for communities to engage in the process. Last but not least, let's do the work. Let's do the work to ensure that the residents of this community are provided with equitable access to health care, stronger infrastructure, greater economic development opportunities, increased internet access expansion, and increased funding for stronger schools, and an increase in community-centered programming. All of the mentioned issues start with the drawing of fair districts and maps. As an employee of Common Cause Georgia and an Albany resident, I look forward to working with the Georgia General Assembly to ensure that the 2021 redistricting process works for all Georgians and ensures that everyone has an equal opportunity to not only have a seat at the table, but to have a voice in the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Anna Pierogi, please. Uh, and then uh, to be followed by Michael Harper. Um, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, thank you to the committee for coming down to Albany. My name is Amna Faruqi. I work for an organization called Nine to Five Georgia, and I'm a resident of Albany in Darty County. Um, I just wanted to, to come here today and say we work on a lot of economic justice and racial justice issues in Albany and Southwest Georgia, highlight bills, um, you know, affordable, safe housing, civic engagement, the right to vote. Um, the reason that residents of Albany and Southwest Georgia pay hundreds of dollars in high light bills, have no safe water to drink, ha don't have access to safe, affordable housing is precisely because they have not been fairly represented in the maps that have been drawn for the last, not just decades, but hundreds of years. And for the people that came up here and talked about cotton fields and talked about protecting homogeneity, I heard slavery and I heard segregation. And those are the kinds of things that they are trying to protect. And so I'm here in front of the committee demanding that this process be transparent, but also that these maps be drawn to protect the black communities in Albany and Southwest Georgia. In the last 10 years, there's been a lot of talk of population decrease, but the population of young black residents of Albany has increased, of young people of color generally has increased, and I'm one of those people that moved here four years ago. And people in this community deserve the right to vote to be protected, they deserve fair fair representation and proper representation. And so we just want to make sure that we don't lose that because Southwest Georgia already needs more delegates and more people to fight for the interests of rural communities, of black rural communities in Atlanta. Um, and that's what I wanted to just come and make clear today, that we're going to keep fighting for that and that we're going to keep watching what this committee does. Thank you, ma'am. Michael Harper to be followed by James Williams. Good, e Good evening and welcome to Albany, Georgia. Uh, my name is Michael Harper. And A I little closer to the mic, sir, so we can hear you. My name is Michael Harper. Yes, sir. And I work Thank with you. several organizations in Albany, Georgia. One in particular, Southwest Georgia Historical and Cemetery Preservation. In that capacity, I work with the development of uh, Harlem in the middle of Albany. A little story. Back before Mary Young Cummings was elected our first city commissioner, Albany had wide, citywide, had 
at citywide elections. And when it looked like she was going to become a commissioner, our city wards were drawn. The first Mary January, you had Ward 3 that came down slappy all the way to Broad, and Oglethorpe was always, Oglethorpe was always the color line in Albany. Once Ward 3 got to Oglethorpe, it bloomed into the black community, which included Harlem, and then that community became a portion of Ward 3. Since that time, that portion of Harlem and the black neighborhood has been misrepresented, underrepresented by the, by the, uh, the representatives from that district to this very day. And what I would like to see is the, city, the district in Albany redrawn to reflect the community and the people that lives in that community and not just come down here and then all of a sudden, and what it really does, it separates the cultural and the African-American business district from the community that supported it and developed it. Thank you. Thank you. James Williams, please, followed by Christy Moore. Good evening. Good evening. To the panel, my name is James Williams. I am the Dorothy County Democratic Chairperson, and we are asking that we consider we consider um, the redistricting of Dorothy County, and one of the reasons we're asking for a fair process in this redistricting process. Um, also, look at the study of the Democratic of the demographics in Dorothy County to look and see what's in Dorothy County. I heard you say it earlier that uh, we know our county. We do know this county. And we ask them to reconsider and wait for the census report and come back and meet with us again and give us a report from the census about the redistricting of Dorothy County. Thank you all. Thank you. Christy Moore, please. Yes, ma'am. He'll be right there. Thank you so much for having me here tonight and for being so accommodating. My name is Christy Moore, and I'm the president of the Valdosta Lowndes County Chamber of Commerce. And I'm here in that capacity as well as as a citizen of the city of Valdosta and Lowndes County this evening. I want to thank you, first of all, for traveling here. I know many of you are from all the corners of Georgia, and it's quite a far drive down to southwest Georgia, but we're grateful that you're here. Tonight, I am not here in a partisan capacity, and nothing I say should be construed as partisan. I'm here with concern for representation for Lowndes County, Valdosta, and honestly, the greater South Georgia area. A big concern that I ask you to consider as you move forward with this difficult process is to keep communities of interest together. One place that we're very nervous about, and I believe a gentleman spoke about this earlier, is when looking at our congressional districts. The 8th district, as well as the 2nd district, are already pretty large districts. We understand that they're going to need to grow, but the first thing that we ask is that you do not grow an 8th district where it goes from the Florida line all the way to Metro Atlanta. Because while I respect the needs and desires of Metro Atlanta, those aren't the same as Middle and South Georgia, and we'd like to keep communities of interest together. Additionally, as you do look to make sure that all the congressional districts in Georgia are even, we know that the second and eighth could potentially be drawn to represent 50 counties in Georgia. 50 counties, that's almost a third of the 159 counties in Georgia, and we really hope that you'll keep them succinct as Obviously, a U.S. Senate has, a senator has a much bigger budget for constituent services, but our con congressional offices do not have that large of a budget. And when you're trying to serve um, 25 different county commissions, school boards, multiple cities, that can get pretty difficult. And for the citizens in our community, we ask that you do keep those districts succinct. Additionally, Lowndes County would 
like you to consider including all of Lowndes County in the 8th District. Currently, the majority of it is in the 8th District, but only Moody Air Force Base is kind of parceled off to the 1st District. In terms of communities of likeness, moving Moody into the 8th District would mean that we're in the same district as Robbins Air Force Base. So as we're discussing military issues, which I think you've, Albany will also say that's something they're concerned about, as we move forward, um, that would be very important to us as well as agriculture is a big deal. It's a big deal in all the rural communities that I've spoken earlier, as well as to Doherty County, as well as to Lowndes County. And we wanna make sure we keep those communities of interest together. We also know that the State House and State Senate districts are going to have to grow. And so while we know they have to grow, we hope you'll consider keeping them drivable. Um, that means taking into consideration things like when a swamp takes up a good part of your district. I know someone's got to have it, but when you're dividing, making sure that they are drivable because we do really depend on our House members and our Senate members. Of course, we're the furthest away from Atlanta, and that means we really have to depend on those members to represent us on a daily basis when you're in session at the Capitol. So we just hope you'll consider keeping these areas succinct um, as well as with communities of interest because we, we do want to keep South Georgia, South Georgia, and we appreciate your consideration and your time this evening. Thank you. Tracy Taylor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to Doherty County. I am Doherty County Republican Chairman, first African American to serve in that capacity. I wasn't scheduled to speak, but when I came in, I started hearing various stories about, you know, race relationships and, and, and the neglect. And when you all take consideration or redistricting this map, think about that. We got a United States congressman that has been over the district for 30 years, a Democrat. Before him, this district had always been represented by a Democrat since about 1870. This map has always been curtailed and designed for a Democrat representation. Since that representation, since doing reconstruction, like I say, since 1870, African American communities haven't been in position to thrive. And I know everything is political and it's designed to keep certain seats in place. But if we want an opportunity to represent this district and grow the, pop uh, the population like it's intended to do, we need to start looking at the political process, reach cross party lines, and start realizing what is best for the American people. Because we've been neglected for so long since 1870 and it's time for really reconstruction to happen because it never actually happened in southwest georgia and i stand here today hopefully be a representation or a symbol or a beacon of hope for the future to come thank you thank you sir all right it looks like we have gotten through the list of everyone that signed up so let me ask was there anyone that signed up or you think you signed up but we didn't get to you tonight all right going once twice three times oh we've got someone in the back sure I had not planned on speaking. Okay. Can, However, can you step a little closer so we can okay. hear you. Right. Yes, ma'am, that's better. All Thank right. you. I had not planned on speaking, but listening can, can you, to. I'm sorry. Could you state your name and tell oh, us? Oh, I'm you are? sorry. My name is Tiffany Elledge of Bacon,ton Georgia. Tiffany Elledge. Elledge. Okay. Yes, Mitchell County. Okay. Thank you. I also 
am a property manager for um, a company located here in Doherty County. And just listening to some of the stuff that's been talked about, I can tell you today that I have tenants. I'm a property manager for about 150 properties. Right now, I have tenants who are unable to pay their rent because their light bill, their water bill, their trash bill with Albany Utilities is more than their rent. And that is a very ridiculous amount of money. And I'm just telling you, the way things are going right now, and I have people call me all the time, and we try our best to work out and payment plans with our tenants. And it's really hard when I'm having to compete with water, gas, and light or Albany Utilities for people's rent. We're a very small company. I don't own the company. My boss owns the company. But we're barely functioning right now. And one of the A number one reasons why we are barely functioning is because people cannot afford to pay their rent because of their water, gas, and light bill. So basically what I want to say here tonight, thank you for coming here and doing that, but as far as the people of Albany is concerned, if you want to make a difference, change your vote. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. I think that concludes uh, our listening portion uh, for everyone who had signed up. I want to thank you. Uh, as, I, as Chair Rich and I began, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for sharing your opinions and your thoughts with us. Um, I can assure you we appreciate you taking the time. We appreciate the warm welcome that you uh, folks here have given us. Uh, and I want to thank all the members of the House and Senate that are on the stage with me that have traveled from various distances across the state to be with you tonight and listen to you. And with that, uh, we will adjourn our meeting. And again, thank you for the evening. <laughs>